Okay, this is going to be my uh, updated thoughts on fog machines. This is um, 2022 November after Halloween and I got all my props put away and we had all the fog machines ready to put them away um, until next year and I'm like okay before I put them away going to do a video on um, thoughts and reviews mostly thoughts more than reviews on fog machines so first of all you know a lot of people don't know about the wattage rating or they know what wattage is but they don't know exactly um, how the wattage works on fog machines so um, here is um, my fog machines um, these on the table are all different types that I got and my mainstay is this one here which is the Spirit Halloween 400 watt uh, this one just has the skeleton on top that doesn't do anything uh, that's their recent seller and um, I've had the best luck with the Spirit 400 watts and um, that's what I use for my props and it's about five or so more down there in my tote where I'm gonna you know put these up uh, when I'm done with the video here until next year but anyway um, you know fog machines come in all kind of wattage this guy here is an older one just 200 watt um, an older 400 watt a newer spirit 400 watt um, up here I don't know where I got this from but this is a 650 watt called Rush by Martin it was actually um, more of a DJ type stage fog machine and this is the only one that has a different type of controller pin out if you can see that there um, I actually don't like that but again you know I don't know where I got it from but you know I buy lots and new stuff new stuff um, over here I got um, a low lying fog machine this big old guy is only 400 watts and all a low-lying fog machine is is a normal fog machine with a chamber for ice so it you know blows the fog through the ice and the ice cools the fog and if you know anything you know fog is basically water or, or heavy water and if you know if water is cooled you know the droplets are cool they're heavier so they stay lower instead of raising up that's all a low-lying fog machine does and this is only 400 watts but I'll explain the watts later um, but anyway you put the fog back here and the ice up there and when it runs the fogs it runs it through the ice chamber and blows it out and that's what makes it low lying versus a regular one where the fog floats up in the air more and that blue one's just a normal 700 watt over here we got a cheap bubble fog machine um, I think this one was called a VBF 9000 but I saw on Amazon I couldn't find any information on this I saw on Amazon they had one from Froggy's Frog that um, looks exactly like this one and on Amazon this one got like a almost a 50% uh, one star uh, bad rating and they said you know it doesn't work you know and and all that and I've had the same with this one cheap bubble fog machines just do not work that's where they're hard to find and when you do find them you you know you can buy one but for the most part um, they don't work unless you get lucky and, and get a good one um, it's just too much to make the fog and then you know have a bubbler and blow the fog into the bubbles and have it come out and work right and this one doesn't work right either never did you know since new and what I do is just turn off the uh, bubble feature and use it for a normal um, fog machine for the bubble fogger so unless you spend a lot of money I've seen people that say that they bought you know this higher end model called a chalet I think it is and they make different models of higher end ones and those work but you know you gotta spend two three four five hundred bucks to get a good one that works these little 50 you know 80 dollar jobbies um they nice concept it just doesn't work in reality um unless you get very lucky over here we got a just a thousand watt um fog machine so anyway 
No matter the wattage, how a fog machine, it works similar to a coffee pot, coffee brewer. You know, you plug in the brewer, it's got to heat up enough to, um, you know, get the water hot enough to percolate. And then once it gets hot enough, you can percolate and make a pot. And once you make a pot, you know, the water is cooled down and it's going to take a while for the uh, water temperature to come back up so you can do another pot. So fog machines work the same. A lot of people think that, you know, hey, I got this fog machine. I want to make fog. I turn it on or press the button and, you know, it makes fog for, you know, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Then it stops. Then it takes a minute or two or 30 seconds to heat up. That's how they work. You know, just like a coffee brewer um, or a uh, hot water tank at home. You know, you use up that hot water, which fog machines, you know, they produce the fog, you know, for, you know, 5, 10 20 seconds and then that's it they got to heat up again and how the wattage wattage rating comes into play is the lower the wattage like this little 200 watt here it's going to take a long time for it to heat back up so i'm just going to make a guesstimate this is not accurate just a guesstimate but let's say the 200 watt machine it'll blow out the fog for you know five ten seconds it's going to take two minutes for that to heat back up we're over here with the uh, thousand water. It blow out the fog for, you know, same fog for five to 10 seconds, but um, it's going to take it, you know, 20, 30 seconds to heat back up. That's the difference in the wattage. Um, even that thousand water is not going to blow continuously. Again, like a coffee brewer at home, you just can't get a, you know, a thousand watts to, it's not enough to um, heat up the tank quick enough so you can blow continuously. It's not power enough, so even that needs a little bit of time. So my guesstimate, guesstimate is like a 200 watt mach little machine like this. It's going to take like two minutes in between, you know, for it to heat back up. 400 watt like these two, you know, maybe one minute, you know, twice as powerful, um, half the time. Over here, I got, you know, the 600 water, you know, 45 seconds, give or take. You know, again, a guesstimate. Um... And over here with the thousand water, you know, 20, 30 seconds. So that's the difference. And that's how it puts out more. Because, you know, if you blew, let's say, you know, we measure the fog in gallons. So let's say this makes this gallon of fog in, in um, 10 seconds. It's going to take, you know, again, two minutes for it to heat back up. So it makes one gallon's worth of fog. And that's just throwing, you know, numbers out there every two minutes. Where this one, it takes, you know, 20, 30 seconds, so let's say 30 seconds, um, which is not, you know, quite accurate. Um, but anyway, 30 seconds, so in two minutes, it would make um, four gallons of um, fog, you know, just using that as a metaphor. And that's why um, a higher wattage rating will actually make more fog because it heats up faster and it can, you know, do another one and then do another gallon, do another gallon a lot quicker, you know, than a smaller um, one. But I found that these little 400s, if you're running um, them for props, you know, just to get the fog effect in the pop, they work perfect. They're fine. It's almost too much for a prop. You know, a 200 like this or a 400, they'll run fine in a prop where it's only going to be activated for a little and then you know, the, the prop got to go through its cycle again. They work fine. But if you want, you know, the fog effect for a haunt or your lawn or something, you're not only going to need, you know, a big one. You're going to need a few big ones to run them. And that's how the wattage rating works. You're not going to have continuous fog. I don't care if you, you know, lay on that button or... Uh, uh, and speaking of buttons, here are two examples of push button activators. You know, those just plug into the uh, controller right there. And the reason I use these two is one is um, momentary. You actually got to physically hold that down. But it doesn't matter if you're holding it down or not. It's not going to go until that ready light, you know, activates. And that's a temperature light. When it comes up, the temperature is ready. You push the button, hold it down, it goes. But even if you're holding it down, once that temperature um, cools down, it's not going to make fog anymore. It's going to have to heat up again. That's what that light is. This one has a light too. But the difference between this one is it's uh, continuous on or off. So you don't have to hold it. So if I turn that on there, as soon as it gets up to temperature, it's going to make fog. But again, you know, if I got it hooked to, 
let's say this thousand water is going to be every 30 seconds before it makes fall even with that on if I got it hooked up to the 200 watt it's going to be approximately every two minutes you know no matter where I got this on or I'm pressing this or no matter what so that's those two timers or no activators controllers here's a timer controller I think Spirit Halloween or other ones sell you know a timer like that and all it is is you can um, you can have it on all the time you know with that button you can you know similar to you know the um, button here or you can use it manual momentary with this one or you can you know push that button in and set the times you know how long it stays on and uh, how active you know like once every minute once every 30 seconds you know once every five minutes you can um, you know adjust that and again how long it stays on but with most of the um, Halloween type props, you know, they're not that big anyway. You can have this thing on all the time or, you know, have the timer like I want it to go every 10 seconds. It's not still not going to go until it comes up to temperature, you know, um, with the timer. And here is another uh, controller. This one's just remote controlled wireless remote control you plug this controller into the back of the fog machine and then you turn it on and off by you know hitting the button here so you know you can wait for people to walk by and you know activate the fog machine remotely remote control by doing that one and last here's um, a controller that's a uh, prop activated controller some props um, that are fog capable you know you plug this small end into the um, prop this is a spirit Halloween one that's a three pin um, plug there and when the prop you know activates and calls for fog it sends a signal into a relay in this thing here and the relay is basically you know pushing the button you know uh, but it's activated by the prop and it turns on the fog machine um, there so that's the different type of controllers um, one thing I did want to go over is I had much better luck with fog machines where it doesn't have this tube coming out the top uh, this is the field tube and on ones with the tube here the, the fog juice is sucked out through the tube through the top and then down and then around and back into the um, the, the tank or the heater um, that's a bad way to do it. I've had uh, a lot worse luck with that where, you know, this long tube, you know, it gets plugged or, or you know, it doesn't suck it in or sometimes the tube is um, not fully at the bottom of the tank like this one here is up there now and it's not fully at the bottom of the tank so it's sucking air instead of fog juice whereas the newer ones, most of them, the tube is at the bottom of the tank. You can't see it. But it's at the bottom of the tank, and it's just a short run from the bottom of the tank uh, into the heater. Um, so that's a much better design. You don't have this long tube, you know, going through to get stopped up, um, you know, sucking out juice or sucking out air. And um, it's less to get stopped up, and it's been less problematic, a lot less. And it gets all the um, juice out of the tank because it's at the very bottom of the tank where this one again the tube you know supposedly sits on the bottom but it doesn't always sit there and you just don't end up getting all the uh, fog juice out so and um, again I've had a lot better luck with the ones without the tube on it so um, I think that's it I've hit on everything that I wanted to hit through so that's my thoughts on a fog machine again they will not work you know continuously um, the more water that you got the quicker it's going to recover and heat up so you will end up with a lot more fall coming out but it still won't be continuous with the big watts and one more thing I had somebody say that um, hey they had a bunch of props and they had a bunch of fog machines and they were blowing fuses and I'm like um, dude a prop if we're going to put a prop in wattage a prop might uh, take 10 watts at most and again you know uh, this is a small um, fog machine so you know I could have uh, 
20 props connected to a single line and they would equal this one 200 watt fog machines props pull very very little power so if you're blowing fuses I figure it's got to be you know you've got some heavy lights going on but LEDs don't pull a lot of power either but you got a lot lot of fog machines which I do again you know I got what four eight up here and I got another five down there 13 fog machines I run from my um, prop um, you can't put all of that on you know one single outlet a single outlet a handle 10 or 15 amps, basically a thousand or 1500, 2000 um, watts at most. So again, you know, you got a thousand watt fog machine, you, you only put one per, you know, outlet. Um, if you got a, you know, 400, you can put, you know, two, maybe three, you know, if you're lucky per outlet, but I would stick with two. So if you're running a lot of fog machines, you're going to need a lot of different outlets um, to run them because Fog machines have heaters in them, and them heaters suck a lot of power. Um, basically, um, every um, 100 watts is 1 amp. So basically, a 200 watt fog machine runs on 2 amps, give or take. Not exact, but close enough rounding it off. A 1,000 watt fog machine runs on 10 amps and again uh, a lot of old houses they had 10 amp circuits some got 15 so um, watch your amps or your watts if you're going to hook up a lot of fog machines all right that's it for this one hope it helps somebody good luck bye